So I'm going to hurry everyone along. So uh, last person in, last person in buys the biscuits for everyone. So um, did you enjoy the party yesterday? Yeah? Did you enjoy the, the rest of the conference yesterday? Sorry, I can't hear you. Did you enjoy the rest of the conference yesterday? <laughs> James, your mouth's opening, mate, and no noise is coming out. <laughs> Good. Okay, so one of the things that, uh, especially coming from the Java world, that I really love about um, Clojure is nothing to do. We've talked a lot about how expressive it is and how powerful it is and how it's going to take over the world. Um, but it's actually, for me, a lot about the community, and that's how I actually ended up being involved at all and, and deciding to learn the language was because I met some really cool people um, in Clojure and it was because of them that I ended up getting involved in it. So um, I'm really keen on making this, as <coughs> Bruce said yesterday, a really open, welcoming, all-inclusive community. Yeah, so that's probably one of the biggest factors that I think, and one of the things that uh, we need to make sure we don't lose as we grow bigger as a community is to make sure that we're inclusive and that people are involved. Um, so that leads into the second day, which has, if there is a theme in the second day, um, has more of a community theme to it. Um, so that leads on to our first talk um, by Bridget, who, who has pointed out to me that I should mention the fact she does not work for Cognitech. For those people who are asking. <laughs> um, uh, and, and if she did, it might change the flavor of this talk. So I repeat, she does not work for Cognitech. Okay, so um, Bridget's going to give us a tour of the Clojure open source ecosystem and hopefully some ideas about how you guys can contribute to that. So over to Bridget, thank you. Thanks, Chris. Uh, well said. Um, I agree with all the sentiments you just expressed. Good morning. I'm Bridget Hillier. Um, I'm a Clojure programmer. Um, uh, thank you for having me. I'm so glad to be here. Um, so um, I, I was brought over all the way from the US. So I thought it might be appropriate to do some, some cultural exchange. <coughs> So uh, you may not know, but uh, last week was a very important um, uh, U.S. holiday, um, uh, Thanksgiving. Um, Thanksgiving commemorates um, uh, a group of English settlers coming over to, to what to them was the New World, um, and uh, being uh, it, it's a celebration of their, their first successful harvest, and they, and they celebrate, celebrated with the Wampanoag tribe who, who helped them. And, had fed them um, before they were able to uh, feed themselves, and they all celebrated Thanksgiving together. Um, so, um, for my, a theme of the talk is going to be uh, giving thanks um, in, in in honor of, of Thanksgiving. Um, I, I'm 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 kind of a spoiled brat. Um, I, I I have a tendency I. I whine really easily. <laughs> so this is something I've tried to work on a little bit with myself because it's not a very flattering um, trait. Uh, so something that I did in my household, um, uh, some of you, my 13-year-old my daughter is here with me today. Some of you may have met her. So um, my family, my husband and, and my daughter and I, um, uh, we try to eat together, eat, eat dinner together every night. And um, something I instituted, and this is really for me, um, although it's helped everybody else too, is, is we do this thing, um, I, I call it gratitudes, where at some point during the meal, everyone goes around and says three things that they're thankful for, and um, uh, everybody has to come up with three things, because we have way more than three things to be <laughs> thankful for uh, at all times. So, uh, which it's, and it's really like the, just the mindset that um, it helps, helps build in me, and then also in um, my uh, child and husband too. Um, uh, uh, I, I found it's a really nice exercise. Um, so I'm, we're going to take that spirit and uh, kind of take that through the, through this talk. So uh, I'd like to go on a uh, tour with you. Let's let's go on a tour of the the Clojure open source ecosystem. Um, Clojure is uh, an open source programming language. Um, so there are a number of people who have 
given of you know their own free will with no remuneration necessarily um, um, uh, to build this language um, and the the core libraries and, and a whole ecosystem around it um, you know, the, the 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 beginnings of it the the language itself um, you know Rich Hickey Stu Holloway um, so many people Stuart Sierra Andy Fingerhut Chris Hauser Christoph Grand Nicola uh, Meto who's going to speak after this uh, Chaz Emmerich Aaron Bedra Tom Fallhaber Michael Fogus and so many others um, have you know contributed to the to the beginnings of the language and continue to contribute um, and. And uh, I am so thankful for what they've done and what they've given us. Um, you know, I, I, I build my career on it. So, you know, I, that, that pays my, what they've done pays my mortgage. And uh, thank you, Rich and company. Um, and, uh, oh, and Alex Miller. Everybody just take a minute and uh, <laughs> let's think about Alex Miller for a minute. That's, that man is somebody we should be um, thankful for. So. Let's, uh, let's take a look at, um, so that's a language, but let's take a look at the ecosystem. Let's, let's look at um, uh, some of the closure projects, open source projects that are out there. So let's start with um, closure tools. So these, these are tools that um, uh, are for you know, dealing with closure itself. Um, Line again, uh, thank you to Phil, uh, Phil, Phil Hagelberg and um, uh, closures. Thanks to Nelson Morris, uh, has put so many uh, uh, hours into maintaining closures and helping line again. Uh, Jean Nicholas Orange now um, is taking over. Um, okay, I'm, I can't thank everybody. I'm, I'm not. I'm going to forget people, and there's so many people. But those those were some key ones that I wanted to, to make sure we mentioned. Um, uh, now there's Boot, um, Mishaniska, Nell Dibert. Okay, okay, that's it. So um, <laughs> tools namespace to tool CLI. Nicola Memento already mentioned him. Okay, sorry, okay, right. Not going to thank everybody personally. Thank you to everybody who's provided these. Um, you know, there's a lot of people who put a lot of hard work into all these. Um, core typed, Eastwood, these are all, um, you know, things that you use for, for dealing with closure itself. Um, um, editors and IDs, um, uh, Bojadar uh, uh, talked to us about CIDR and uh, closure mode uh, yesterday. Um, Vim Fireplace, Light Table, Night Code, Counterclockwise, all open source um, IDs and editors um, that help us write um, our closure. And so there's uh, people working on these tools um, um, that give us the ability um, to write closure. Um, uh, there's, I could have gone on and on with, with web tools. So just some, some highlights, uh, Luminous, Pedestal, Ring, Composure, Duct, um, uh, thanks James, um, uh, Yada for uh, Malcolm Sparks um, and company, Liberator, Composure API, CLJ, HTTP, and Live, Hiccup, and you know, it goes on and on. Those are just greatest hits there. There's, there's so many, so many, uh, so many of these projects. Um, closure Script, a number of open source um, tools and, and this is just a, this also just a sampling of the closure script tools. I, you know I could have done a whole presentation where we walked through um, all of the different closure script tools that exist. Um, Ohm, Reagent, Quiescent, Hoplon, uh, Figwheel, Chestnut, all open source tools. People uh, people are hard hard at work uh, developing these tools um, that are uh, in a really nice state now and um, have all these tools for, for doing uh, closure script work. Um, so the, there's a number of tools and utilities, um, open source, um, closure, uh, closure web driver, prismatic schema, which we heard about a, a lot yesterday, um, CLJ time, Cheshire, buddy friend, postal for mail, Alf, um, Sente, uh, closure stats D, um, uh, so many things. Um, so something that I'd like to point out, um, from here is friend, um, uh, Chaz Emmerich worked on Friend um, has for a long time and has now, you know, passed the, uh, passed the baton and is looking for a maintainer and I think has been for a while. I don't think anybody's taken that up. So um, uh, something something to think about these uh, these projects that, that that there are people working on them, but there are also people maintaining them. So there's all kinds of contributors um, contributing to it and and that, but all of them mostly have some person who's the maintainer, the leader who puts a lot of time and effort. Um, um, uh, a lot of work, unpaid generally, um, uh, to to um, uh, to keep these things going and to do all of the 
uh, you know, to write the code, but then also all of these other tasks that are involved with, uh, with running a, a project, which we're going to talk about. Um, okay, so uh, the first one there was a, a closure web driver. So I just wanted to point, stop and look at this one. This is, this is one of my favorite um, uh, closure tools. Um, so uh, something that, this, this is from the, the README. Um, so if you go look for um, CLJ web driver um, on GitHub, you'll come here. And there's a few things that I really like about this. Um, it has um, a wiki. Um, a mailing list. Um, it has triaged issues um, so that if you wanted to go help out with it, um, you know, they're labeled. You, you, know, you can go look at the issues and there's things that you can find to start helping with. Um, it's got continuous integration set up and everything's all, it's all very clearly laid out here right from the top of the page um, you know, where all these resources are for if you wanted to get involved um, with it. Um, uh, so uh, everything is easy to find um, that um, you might need if you wanted to jump in and start working on CLJ WebDriver. All right, um, moving on. Um, there's a number of uh, database um, projects. Um, HoneySQL, uh, Corma, Java JDBC, Closure JDBC, SQL, uh, Neocons, Congo Mongo. It, and that's, again, a sampling because there's so many of them. Some, some of the, the, the big ones are there. Um, oh. Sean Corfield, that's another person who's put a lot of work into these, specifically mentioned. Um, uh, distributed, <laughs> distributed systems, I, I don't know that that's the right, um, uh, th th I don't think everything necessarily falls under distributed systems. This is more like distributed systems and associated distributed systems e tools. I, I didn't, couldn't think of a good name. Um, <laughs> I've seen a running thing in talks about distributed systems where they, uh, there's always a slide with, with it on fire, so I decided. <laughs> <laughs> to use that for distributed systems. Okay, so um, uh, some some distributed system tools um, in Clojure, uh, Onyx, Freeman, Jepson, uh, the Puppet, uh, the Puppet projects, Casklog. These are all open source projects um, having to do with distributed systems. So if distributed systems is your thing, um, there's all kinds of ways uh, to get going in, in existing projects that are out there if you want to uh, to to get involved. So I, I want to point out. Um, pull out one of these, um, one of my current favorite projects, closure projects, is Onyx. Um, it's a uh, distributed computation system written in closure. Um, uh, it's, it's all in closure. Um, that one of the things I really like about it is the, the level of abstraction um, uh, that, it, that it uses, um, all the workflows that you define um, uh, for uh, the, your computation or streaming computation is, um, they're all, it's just maps. And, vectors and maps. Um, it's, just, it's just really nice, really easy to use. Uh, one of the reasons it's easy, easy to use is because they have done a fantastic job of providing documentation for this project. So, um, so I mean, if you just want to start using Onyx, um, there's a user guide, um, and it's, it's beautiful. It's very detailed. Um, this, is, this is the README. If you go to Onyx, on, uh, I think it's Onyx platform on GitHub, um, this, is where you're, this is what you're going to first see. And you immediately go to this beautiful user guide that's very detailed, very rich, um, gives examples, um, and uh, and a cheat sheet. Um, it's automatically generated, and and um, and it's all kept up to date um, fairly well. Um, so really nice resource. Then some other things you can see here is that there's there's the developer's guide, right there, right right at the top of the page, um, um, that shows you how you can start if you want to start contributing to Onyx. You, you can just jump in there and it tells you how to do it. Um, code level API documentation. Um, uh, what else? Uh, this is all just right on the front page and all really simple, easy pointers to the resor resources you would need to start contributing to this project. Um, uh, they've got a, um, a mailing list. Um, how, how do I just run the test? How, I just, how do I get this and just immediately start working with it? it this is the command that you need. That's it. Go, get going. Um, and, and how you could start um, committing to the project. Um, uh, another thing that you can't see here, but right at the top of the page, they have um, uh, uh, a, a Gitter chat. Um, and uh, I think they also have a, a uh, they're in the Clojurian Slack um, and uh, probably on RC too. Um, uh, 
anyway, it's really easy to get a hold of them, um, and they're generally there, um, um, and so can and, and are responsive and can help you with questions. Also, in, with the mailing list, if you go and ask a question, they'll they'll respond to you pretty quickly and um, and 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 help you out quite a bit. Um, so, so if you wanted to go contribute to Onyx, it, it's uh, s seamless. It's, it's, it's a real smooth process to do that. All right, so let's um, move on. Some more tools, testing, midge, expectations, speckled, uh, cloveridge, criterium. Um, uh, kind of general broad testing. Um, so a number, a number of projects you could um, use, contribute to, get involved in. And then there's so many more. I mean, I just this is this is just a uh, a survey of kind of the the top um, uh, projects that you know you know the um, most common or uh, I, at the at the end of my slides I, I show what, how I found all these projects and how I picked um, uh, the ones to include um, and it's you know mostly the ones with most stars in GitHub or um, uh, uh, and then I have a set of criteria of which, which ones I decide to include. Um, so here's, here's a number of other projects. Um, Overtone, we've, that's come up a number of times uh, here. Um, Alda, another music programming language from Dave Yarwood. Um, uh, Quill, Cantor, um, Kodox, Marginalia, Autodoc, um, Instaparse, Loom. There's so many projects that, there's so many different interesting things that people are building with Clojure that are open source free for you to use, and, and you could contribute to if, if you wanted to. So that was, those were libraries and um, uh, projects, there's, but there's, there's so much more. Um, open source is more than just, um, uh, you know, uh, libraries and projects, it's um, documentation also. The, there's a number of open source uh, uh, documentation for, for closure. Um, so closure.org, um, was just recently open sourced, um, and uh, they um, and uh, uh, Cognitech uh, uh, Alex Miller announced um, that they're seeking contributions for it. So I think the idea is that they would like it to become kind of the central place from which you can find closure documentation that becomes a, a community resource. Um, and uh, from I, I've heard rumor that there's a beautiful new re redesign coming for it as well, although that hasn't been published yet. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing that. Um, and so in the announcement, uh, which I included in, in, in uh, uh, the links at the end of my talk, um, uh, it tells you how you can start contributing to it. And um, you can build out documentation or add things, suggest things that aren't there. Um, it's, you know, the main closure documentation is there, and I think that will continue to exist um, basically as is. Um, Let's see, uh, Closure Docs and Closure Doc. <laughs> um, uh, Grimoire, um, Closure Toolbox, again, thanks, James Reeves. Um, Closure Style Guide, thanks, uh, Bojidar. Um, uh, so um, if, if, if you don't want to write code, you spend all day writing code, and, um, but you still want to give back to uh, Closure in some way, um, uh, documentation is, there's plenty of opportunities uh, to do that. Um, uh, some other open source projects are learning projects, so projects for learning closure, and the, the classic one is uh, foreclosure. Um, still, still, um, uh, they still accept uh, contributions. Um, I, I got, um, I, I found something and had um, a change included in there. Um, closure Cohen's, which I haven't used, but I've heard really nice things about. Um, uh, the Wonderland Closure Katas, which is Karen Meyer's um, uh, katas that came from the Living Closure book. Um, and then Closure Bridge. So Closure Bridge um, is uh, a project to help increase diversity in um, the closure community. And uh, uh, Allie King's going to talk about that later today. Um, but what I wanted to point out that is it's an open source project. Um, so there's so many different ways that you could help contribute to that. Um, there's curriculum, there, and there's a number of pieces of the curriculum, so there's, you know, different things, all different kinds of, uh, you know, there's a, a, a couple of Quill projects, there's um, uh, an Overtone project, um, there's, um, there, there's a bunch of um, different, um, there's the, the, the 
the narrative curriculum in there, and as well as these projects that are used for learning in, in, in Closure Bridge, and all of them um, could uh, use review or uh, contribution, and um, you know, people who are running Closure Bridges and, and find things as they use them, um, uh, they would love to have um, pull requests. Um, or or um, uh, it's, we also compile, uh, other people have created their own curriculum, and so there's a list there of uh, different curricula that people have used. Um, so new, new contributions are also welcome. Um, there's also organizing materials. So if you've run a closure bridge and um, you know something about how, how things should be organized, um, you can also can, uh, do a pull request for the organizing materials. Um, or you, know, you can organize a workshop um, if you would like to um, help increase uh, diversity in um, your community. Um, uh, I always use your organizers. Um, NTAs and everybody else who helps put the workshops on. Um, uh, I, I believe there's some talk about a, another one in London being organized. So um, if, for those of you who are, who are here local, um, uh, there are opportunities. So that's Closure Bridge. Um, Cognitect um, open sourced their Intro to Closure lab, which they had used for trainings. Um, so that's available. You can use it. Um, you can also contribute back to it if uh, you, know, you feel that there's things that could add there. Um, try closure is another oldie but a goodie. There's open source books. Um, closure Cookbook um, has been around for a little while. Um, still, uh, it, it is entirely an open source uh, book. Uh, that's how they, they put that one together, and you can still contribute to it. Um, use it if, uh, for, for your own uh, closure purposes. Um, closure for the Brave and True, I found, has a repository as well. Um, which is the, the website. So there's the website and the book, and they don't, I don't think they quite match up. Um, uh, but you can contribute, you know, if you find it fixes or additional material for Closure for Brave and True. Um, there, there, there might be other ones. Um, those are the only couple that I can think of. Oh, and this, this picture is my entire um, computer book bookshelf. Uh, I used to have a whole, years ago, a whole bookshelf, but it's all, it's all come down to these, these, these few. I have an O'Reilly Safari subscription. I don't, I don't need actual paper books anymore. All right. Um, so, so like I said, there's you know there's all these libraries and projects that you can contribute to, but then there's all different kinds of things um, that I feel um, fall under the open source umbrella, um, and um, generally um, uh, community. Um, I think all of, all of these. Um, uh, uh, different parts of cl the Closure community are either o actually open source projects themselves or contribute to open source or in the spirit of open source. So I think these all, all fit as well. Um, uh, Closure in Slack. Um, so if you're not on Closure in Slack yet, um, which I'm not, um, uh, uh, that's a great way to contribute. Um, so um, like I said, our, uh, kind of our theme here is gratitude, you know, um, being thankful for for all of this work that all of these contributors and maintainers have put into these projects, um, and we can we can find ways to contribute back. And you know, if, if you can't if you can't just can't uh, write a line of code, can't contribute documentation, um, there's so many more ways also that you can um, get involved. Answering people's questions on Slack, I think that's absolutely you know, IRC uh, closure on IRC and Freenode is you know that's that is part of open source. Um, so that's another way that you can you can. You can give your thanks by helping contribute forward. Um, uh, closure user groups. Um, so there's a really active, nice community of closure user groups all across the world. Um, uh, I had looked at there's a place in the um, uh, the closure wiki where it lists all of the closure user groups, and I had looked at it earlier this year, and there were there were a lot. Something like I, I can't remember, but something like eighty to one hundred or something like that. There's, there's a lot around the world, and some really active ones, and and people are doing all kinds of interesting things. And I, London is a great example of the, the dojos and all of the interesting creative things that um, have happened here in London. Um, uh, Zach Telman's uh, open uh, office hours um, uh, uh, presentations, uh, hack nights. Um, uh, uh, the Austin, Clo uh, Austin Closure Meetup um, watched um, 
the, the Lisp cast videos together and worked through them together. Um, uh, so there's all kinds of creative things that you can do um, uh, in closure use groups, and that's, you know, uh, and, and you know, maybe even finding um, uh, a closure open source project to contribute to and doing it as a group or finding some way to, you know, maybe pair uh, during a user group session might be a way to um, uh, contribute to open source. And there's so many other things that you can do. Um, uh, closure conferences, that's another way to, you know, get together and share. Um, uh, the closure mailing list. Um, there's, there's so many things. There's so many, so many ways um, to get involved. It's such a friendly community. So all those things I mentioned, what's missing? No, Bruce isn't. Bruce is there throughout the whole thing. Bruce is not missing. Um, <laughs> quick study. Um, <laughs> uh, so, I, I, all that whole list. It, you know, it, it wasn't everything. <laughs> there were certainly a whole lot of things that were not in that list. What's, what's missing? There are whole big chunks. Yes, in the back. Okay, fair enough, yep. Yes. Closure core. Closure core. <laughs> um, okay, that was kind of a plant. <laughs> um, yeah, yes, um, closure core and a number of other things. Um, there's, there's a theme, though, of, of, of what, what, was, what was not in there. So, for the most part, everything that um, I included doesn't require a CA, doesn't require, not everything. <laughs> but most of the things I included do not um, require a contributor agreement. Um, uh, so, so for what I chose to include, like, like I said, there was uh, kind of a, um, a rubric there. Um, you know, I, I searched GitHub and used some, some, some uh, websites that people had compiled lists of projects. And um, so, you know, things that were, um, uh, had you know the most stars things like that, but but um, then when I would go and evaluate, I would um, find projects that were had multiple contributors, active contribution, um, uh, you know, still being actively maintained. Um, but every, everything that I just listed are um, are projects that you could today go and immediately start um, contributing to. So these are all projects that all of us could give back to, all of us could be involved in some way or another. Um, and, um, and, you know, all of these people have given so much, a, a, way, a, way, to, a way to show our thanks. There's many ways to show our thanks for the work that they've done. Um, uh, but one is contribution. That's what people are looking for with, with open source. Um, so, so what are some specific ways for how, so there's all kinds of ways to support these projects. Um, of course, you can, you know, write some code, do a PR, um, but you can also do testing. Um, you can use the projects and file, you know, file bugs, um, create issues, give feedback um, to the maintainers. Um, you can fix bugs. Um, uh, almost always the projects are looking for help with documentation. Uh, there's almost always some, some, some level of documentation that you can help out with. Um, uh, so I, I, I don't mean to fundraise from the stage, but I just want to point out that there's another way which is financial, and uh, Bojadar mentioned this yesterday too, and uh, CIDR is another project that's on um, Bounty Source um, that, um, you know, if you're using it every day, um, you can help by giving money. Or your, the company you work for that's, you know, committed to closure can also help um, financially with these projects. Um, I, there's, there, are many, there, there are many projects where people are using large parts of their time, you know, either aren't working full time or, um, you know, just using huge amounts of their, their free time, um, where a financial contribution would help them, would help the maintainers um, do, you know, provide more for you. Um, and I specifically want to call out Clojars, um, which all of us depends on. <laughs> if Clojars went down, I would have all kinds of problems personally um, at work, um, and I would imagine most of you would too. And there have been some people who've just uh, 
valiantly been keeping that thing going. Um, Nelson Morris, again, I just has done an amazing job keeping that going and has passed the reins. Um, and now Toby Crawley is taking care of it, and he's uh, started the bounty source. Um, so that's a way you could financially contribute to Clojars to make sure that you know everything's happening with Clojars that we need it to uh, to keep it going. Um, so one thing that maybe people don't think about so much that uh, is one of my favorite ways to help um, support um, open source projects is moral support. So. There's these maintainers out there doing all this hard work constantly. And you know, we, a great way to show thanks is to say thank you. So, you know, my, one thing you just do is just, you know, Bojadar's here, thank him. Um, uh, you know, there's so many people here in this audience um, who, you know, probably just use, you know, some, some, some show of thanks. Um, uh, but there's other ways to show moral support too, just, you know, kind of, you know, joining in with people, you know, helping out, answering questions on IRC, or um, uh, uh, just in some way acknowledging. Um, there's all kinds of ways that you can do that, that, that you can acknowledge uh, people's hard work and, um, and thank them. So, um, probably um, you have an open source project or you have one that you're thinking about. Um, that you uh, a project that you have that or that you want to build um, that you'd like to make open source. Um, so, uh, uh, Clojure is a very friendly community, and um, the way that we build open source and we build um, open source contributions is to be welcoming to new contributors, um, to, to newcomers. Um, and this is a community that's very good at at that. <laughs> Not necessarily always, but 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 um, in general, that's something that the culture community is, is 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 has has done pretty well. Um, and so let's um, look at some ways that if you have an open source project, um, that you can um, be welcoming to newcomers. So I showed so I showed a couple of projects. I showed um, I showed CLJ WebDriver and Onyx. Um, and there were some examples of some of these these aspects of being. A, a, uh, uh, friendly to newcomers that they all had in there that we saw already. Um, so um, uh, it can be difficult to get involved in an open source project. There's, there can be a lot of barriers to entry. Um, I mean, even if you are uh, an advanced closure user, uh, have contributed to open source before, it can still, you know, you can go and look in a project and maybe not be able to feel your way around or, um, you know, get confused. There's, there, there's, there's many barriers to entry. Um, for contributing to open source. And, and here are some things that you can do to lower those barriers to entry. So um, one thing you can do is you can have a mailing list. A lot of people have Google groups. Um, you can have a specific getting involved page. So you can set up a page. You, know, you can either be in your readme or you can have something you know, directly right off your readme um, where this is how you get involved. And th these are the steps. This is, this is how you uh, build things. This is how you use continuous integration. This is, um, this is how you, um, uh, this is the first thing that you want to look at. These are the things you need to know. Here's the user guide. You know, having everything right there. Um, uh, and we saw that in some of the examples we looked at where it's right on the readme, it has a direct pointer, one sentence. This is, this, this is what you do, this is go, get started. Um, another thing you can do, um, and uh, this has this uh, come out uh, generally of the open source community, um, uh, 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 a project called Open Hatch h helped um, promote this as well. Is that you can you can triage your issues, you can go through your issues, and you can put labels on there. Um, and there's some standard type labels for. Um, there's not really agreement, but there's a few that you see more commonly for for issues that would be good to get started with. Um, you know, maybe people want a big significant issue to work on, but you know, probably something smaller will help you get started. Um, so uh, some people mark their issues. Uh, Beginner, bite size, startner, newbie. Newbie's not as preferred, but people use it really commonly, so I can understand why you continue to use it. I, 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 would, I would lean toward beginner, bite size, and starter. Another thing that does is that helps people who are newer to closure, somebody who's a closure beginner or you know not too far along, um, that makes that helps them ha uh, have an opening for how to start contributing to open source, which then. 
um, gives us another way to kind of open up the community and make it more inclusive. Um, uh, we, being open to beginners isn't the only way to do that, but it is one, one way to kind of op open the window of, of, of who's, uh, who can um, be involved in our community. Um, Okay, so if somebody, so somebody comes along, comes into your uh, IRC channel or in Slack or, or sends you an email, contacts you in the mailing list, um, uh, they say they want to get involved. Um, something that um, has been found to be really useful for getting people involved is to have a suggestion for them. They might not follow it, but at least it's, it's kind of a hook. So one thing you can do is you can think about um, what's a good starter contribution that somebody could make. Um, an example of this with Onyx is when I, when I did that and went and talked to them um, in their Gitter chat, um, uh, uh, Lucas uh, said, well, you know, developing a plugin is probably a really good thing to do because it, you know, it helps you understand kind of the, the, the borders of the project. Um, and, and I went and looked and I, that was, was actually a really, really good suggestion. So it might not be what I end up contributing, but um, uh, it, it, it was a hook, you know. It, it got me thinking about it. I went and looked through the plugins. I understood how they worked, and um, and it was a really nice introduction to the project. Um, uh, so some of the suggestions that I'm I'm, just, I'm mentioning are um, from a paper which I can't think of the name of, but is is also in in the resources um, at the end of my talk, um, uh, where somebody has done research um, on how to reduce barriers to entry to open source. So these are actually, um, uh, you know, people have actually done studies um, of, of, of what works. Um, having um, IRC or other chat available um, uh, uh, so people can contact you um, is, is a good way uh, to help people. Um, so the social factor. So um, if somebody comes and wants to get involved in your project um, and uh, you're nice to them, <laughs> um, they'll be more likely to want to contribute to your project. If you start, uh, you know, berating them about their lack of understanding about something, they're not going to want to um, uh, get involved in your project. Those are kind of the obvious things, which isn't obvious to a lot of people. <laughs> um, uh, but um, just being nice, just being friendly, um, you know, just being kind and patient. You know, people might not be where you are with their understanding of things. Um, but you know, at the very least, it's an opportunity to connect with people. You know, maybe they won't contribute. Maybe they maybe they don't understand, and that's fine. Um, you know, putting it out there um, is a way to connect with people, and, and and making that a friendly experience is helpful for everybody and for the whole community. Um, something and, and a resource that you can use um, to help you um, um, think about ways to be even more friendly to people who are um, new to open source projects uh, is the Recurse Center social rules. Uh, Recurse Center used to be um, Hacker School, and they developed this really nice uh, user guide for, um, uh, for the people who do Recurse Center. Um, and and, I, and it, I think it applies generally. Um, what some of the big ones are um, uh, no feigning surprise, no well actuallys, no backseat driving, no, no subtle isms. Um, uh, the subtle isms. Um, this is hard, and, and everybody, every, every one of us, including me, uh, does these, um, and it's good to think about them and try to find the ones that you have and that, and that you do. For example, the example that they have in their, their, their document is um, don't say things like, um, it's so easy my grandmother could do it. Everybody understands why that's not a good thing to say, right? Should, yeah, uh, anybody a little confused about grandmother ageism? So you're saying that women aren't particularly good at getting technology. I, I've heard, I, I've heard like people say that to me recently. So, uh, I, you know, I, and, uh, you know, I, I do things like this too, um, all the time. In fact, I, we grew up in a world that has funny attitudes about things, and. And we can all just keep on trying to get better at being more friendly and more open and try to remove things from uh, kind of the unfriendly things that we say. And it's, you know, it's, we're all works in progress and we all are all just trying to do better all the time. 
I'm the first person, so not trying to point any fingers here. And you know, if you do one, and and, this, and the Recur Center said this, says this in their documentation as well. Is if if you do something that isn't so friendly, and somebody points it out to you, they're not saying you're a bad person and you need to be purged from the community. <laughs> they're just you know, it's just a suggestion, like oh maybe that's not a great idea. Maybe you want to say you're sorry, something like that. Um, uh, and you know, well, we all will learn together and move on. So, um, and 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 it shouldn't be. Nobody should be condemning you for doing those things as well. You know, it goes 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 two ways. Um, uh, answering questions. So that's another thing that you can do. Oh, and so in the in the research, um, uh, either either 24 or 48 hours. If somebody say sends you an email, um, you, you want to get back to them. If you if they if they wait too long, that will um, make them less engaged. Um, oh, um, uh, the uh, making marking issues is um, bite size beginner. Uh, uh, Leaf Porman um, uh, did a search of GitHub using the GitHub search API to find issues that were marked that uh, that way in closure projects uh, to to compile them to to help people have a place to go to just immediately find some. Um, and Marcus Blankenship put it up um, in his uh, uh, GitHub repository. Um, and this is from a while back. I was, I was going to redo it, but a actually a lot of them are still there, um, funny enough. Um, so it's just an example from those. Um, uh, other ways to be uh, new contributor friendly. Um, so great documentation, and that you know that's a good thing to do one way or another. And so again, it, in in some of the examples we looked at, they had a, you know a good README where everything that you would need to get started is just right there. Um, uh, a, a user guide for how to actually use the software um, that actually explains how to use it that doesn't assume um, prior knowledge. That's that's a hard one to do. Um, sometimes that's another good reason to have other people. A documentation being a way that people contribute because new users or people who didn't actually develop themselves might be able to see some of those things uh, that you just assume knowledge. It's it's a difficult thing to do. So. Uh, a, a, a useful user guide for users and new users. Um, having a wiki, a blog, um, making the documentation easy to find so you don't have to hunt through places to get to it. And we saw that in some of the examples where the documentation was right there at the top of the readme. You go look at the project and find it. Um, keeping the documentation up to date, hard thing to do. Again, another place for contributors. Um, and then, you know, just regular uh, code level uh, documentation. Uh, finally, um, another thing that the, 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 the research into being um, uh, smoothing barriers to entry uh, for newcomers um, is to make your source code in a familiar structure. Don't use some unusual personal way of structuring your code. Do, do structure in a way that's um, typical so people who are familiar with Clojure will know immediately where to find things. Um, familiar tools. Um, uh, for example, using one again, I, I think boot qualifies here too. Um, uh, then another thing um, that you could get involved in this kind of taking it to another level is mentoring. So actually taking people on uh, to help them along um, in in working with your project and contributing. Um, some some ways where that's been formalized is with Google Summer of Code and Outreach here, a couple of programs um, that actually pay people uh, to take a summer or some period of time uh, to contribute to open source and match mentors. So those are programs you can get involved with, and Clojure is, is, is involved with Google Summer of Code. So uh, that was just three slides of a lot of things to do for your project. Um, so <laughs> if you need to do all that to have an open source project, um, do you even want to open source <laughs> your project? And, and this is kind of an ongoing um, uh, theme with people who maintain open source projects. It's a lot of work. I mean, it's a lot of work just to you know make the code work. Um, and then if you have all these other tasks, and I haven't even listed all, all the tasks that a, an open source uh, project maintainer has to do. There's a whole lot of other things involved. Um, so if you're expected to do this to you know to be open to, to newcomers and make the community friendly. Um, are you sure you want to do it? And I think that's a good question to ask. You know, before you take your 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 favorite project and put it up on GitHub and publicize it, um, are you willing to put in the work to do that? Um, I think you really should stop and think about that before you you know before you push. Um, uh, 
you don't have to, for sure, if you, you want to share your code with the world, um, you want other people to be, be able to use it, but you don't have the time to maintain it, that's fine. But I, what I would do in that case is just make sure that you have a good disclaimer in your readme, um, you know, not maintained, or you know, this is free for public use, but you know, no expectations. You just say something on there so that people know. But if you actually want people contributing and you want people to, you know, to do what open source is meant to do, um, uh, just set, set expectations, make sure you have enough time, recruit other maintainers, recruit other people to help you do that work and have people do specific things. Um, some of the bigger projects that I mentioned have people who, you know, alongside the maintainer will say answer questions or help with the mailing, us that kind of thing. Um, um, so, oh, I mentioned um, Open Hatch and Outreachy. Those are a couple of projects. Um, that are has specifically addressed um, beginners to open source um, and, and some resources for how to help that. So those, those might be some things that, that you want to look at. Open Hatch, I don't know how active it is anymore, but at least the resources out there if you want to go uh, get some, some more ideas. All right. So if you want to get involved in, in open source, um, here's some ideas. Um, uh, everybody's first universal question is, how do I pick a project? And you know, there's some typical answers to that. You know, what do you need? What, you know, what do you need at work? Or what, what are things that, that you need for your own personal work? What, what are you interested in? Um, what are your friends doing? You know, having a social aspect to it uh, definitely helps getting involved in a project. Um, then go pick a task. Um, you might, you know, there's something might pop out when you're looking at issues. Um, uh, there's a lot, of, and like I said before, there's a lot of different ways to get involved. So documentation, reporting bugs, triaging, uh, triaging issues, answering other people's questions. Those are all things you can do that might get you on the path to contributing code, um, or not, those might be ends in themselves. Um, they're all, it's all very valuable work. Um, uh, and, and then once you do get started, make sure to get some, some support. Like I said, friends. Friends is always a good way. Having you know, some social aspect to tie you in um, will uh, really, um, help you uh, keep going. Um, uh, uh, when you contact uh, maintainers, make sure you ask good questions. And there's, there's all kinds of information out there uh, about how to ask good questions. One of the main things is to show that you've made some effort to answer your question yourself. So you know, show, show when you ask your question, you know, I did this, but this didn't work. What, what, what would I need to do to, to make it work? Um, and then how do you keep on going? Again, friends. Um, you know, find people to pair with. This is this is something I've done with open source contribution. Is like I set some time aside and just you know pair with somebody. And you know, maybe we don't even get so much done, but at least kind of helps um, motivate um, getting getting involved and staying involved. Um, uh, so so I've talked a lot about maintainers. Um, uh, once you are maintaining a project, um, you are way more <laughs> way more um, involved. Uh, uh, so that some, something you could do is maybe think about helping maintaining projects um, that will really keep, keep, you, keep you involved probably longer than you want to be. Um, uh, and then um, think, think about um, supporting the maintainers that are out there. Um, one of the biggest ways I said is yeah, say thank you to them for all their hard work. Um, the, and, and, and there were a couple of projects I pointed out that um, have maintainers that are, are, have given up maintaining them. And so one option is to entirely take over, take over maintenance of an a, of open source project. Um, uh, getting paid to make open source contributions really helps as well, too. So there, then there, are, some, there are some companies that are paying um, uh, developers to um, contribute to open source. And thank you to them. So. Um, like I said, around our dinner table, we, we think of three things that we're thankful for. So right now, think of three closure open source projects that you're thankful for. And we've talked about so many ways that you can, you can express that thanks. Um, so how can you express your thanks for those, those projects? And that's it. I would love questions because I would love to have a conversation started. From, this. from a, a naive perspective, um, uh, 
third party libraries that begin with core dot something kind of gain additional uh, credibility uh, from that aspect that is that that's entirely illusory is it there's no uh, there's uh, just because a library is named core dot something doesn't imply any uh, any additional uh, quality control that's a good question I, and I think it does actually I think there is some process to getting your project included in core and, and any of the ones that happen to have uh, uh, showed up in here have in some way been um, uh, blessed to be named core. I, d I don't think that's just something you can, <laughs> I think, well, it would be, um, you could call your project core dot something, but it would be um, uh, impolite, <laughs> not a little frowned upon maybe. I mean, I'm, I'm not saying it from an official standpoint, it's, that's my understanding of, of things. It, it, does anybody have anything else to add? <laughs> I, I could be totally wrong. One of the other uh, sort of moral qualities, I think, that goes along with open source contribution as well as um, thankfulness is kind of humility. And um, I worry, I guess, that if I open source something and had taken the wrong approach and someone stronger than me came on board um, with a strong idea about how to direct it, whether I'd have the humility to take their advice and to, to let them sort of take the lead. So there must be a lot of judgment calls to be made when receiving contributions from people um, both good and bad. You know, bad, how do you tell someone nicely? And, and good, how do you have the humility to change your own direction? That's such a good point. And, and, and I think there's a number of things, a number of the kind of moral aspects to, to open source maintenance. Um, uh, along with humility, I would add patience. And I think any of the maintainers in this room would could go on and on about the things that you learn and taking on these projects and kind of the, the leadership and personal growth that you go through um, uh, to be able to have the types of interactions with people um, where often this is your baby um, and you know, you're putting it out there, which, which is a vulnerable act, and then, um, and then getting feedback from people and then um, you know being uh, kind and slow and patient and being able to bring people along um, and being open to challenges. Um, uh, I, you know, I, I think it's, it's a good experience you know, on um, kind of your professional trajectory if, you, if you're involved in open source, which we all are, um, to maintain a project at some point. Because I think, I think there is, uh, uh, you make a really good point that, that there's, there's, there's uh, some personal growth that happens there that's uh, it's, it's really useful. I guess, sorry, I just want to select, am I right to respond to that a little bit? Yeah, sorry, I don't like doing this, but. Um, so I kind of got a pull request to a project of mine that was really small recently, where the contributor had like basically rewritten the whole thing, and I think it was better. And I was like, well, this is great, but like you just made a new project, so you should make a new project, and I'll put a link to you on the README. Like, it's not a zero-sum game. There's no reason like major contributions like that can't coexist with, with the original project. Well, I hope to uh, hear lots of thank yous throughout today. <laughs> Not to me, to between each other. Thanks so much. OK, so thanks again, Bridget. Um, as I said, the community is the reason why I ended up getting involved and do, standing up and making a fool of myself up here. So um, do, if there, there are still, I th unfortunately, some of the guys that you saw that spoke yesterday who, who have contributed to open source projects and not here today because they couldn't stay for more than one day. But there are still some open source contributors, so um, you know, please say thank you to them. <laughs>